Changing Lanes, the official podcast of BMW. Hey, everybody. Welcome to this episode of Changing Lanes, the official podcast of BMW. I'm Jonathan, tech geek, fan of fun facts, and speed freak with cars on the internet. And I'm Sarah, road trip junkie, carpool karaoke fan, and mad about driving with the top down. Hey, Jonathan, you know... We are in such a monumental place in time and history. Mm -hmm. We understand how important it is to protect the environment. And we are able to use technology to help to do that. So it comes as no surprise that the faster technology advances, the more we have to understand what that technology is. So take, for example, electric vehicles or EVs for short. Now, EVs are locally emission-free. They have lower operating and maintenance costs, and even some countries have incentives and tax credits when you buy an EV. Wow. But the question is, what exactly is an EV or an electric vehicle? Yes, when you're at a traffic light, you'll have enough torque to smoke the guy next to you when the light turns green. And you'll do it in a sneaky way because the engine is so quiet. <laughs> but what is actually inside this electric vehicle? I mean, how is it built? And how is technology helping us to advance this type of car for a better future? And that's exactly what we're talking about in today's podcast – Electric Cars and Plug-in Hybrids Explained. So throw on your nerd glasses, everybody, and let's get our learn on. All right. So technological advances in electric mobility enable car makers to offer an ever-expanding range of vehicles. This is awesome, but it makes it easy to lose track of all of these developments. Now, some buyers are happy with a plug-in hybrid, while others want a fully electric car. And today's comparison of electric cars explains the different kinds of designs that are out there. And just so you know, we will use the term EV, which is an abbreviation of electric vehicles, to include fully electric vehicles as well as hybrids. So to explain what kind of electric cars that are out there, I'm going to pass this one over to Sarah. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you very much, Jonathan. Okay. Now, all in all, there are three types of electric cars. So one, we've got fully electric. Two, we've got hybrids. And three, we've got the fuel cell vehicles. Yes, there's a subcategory within the hybrids that we'll get to later in the podcast. But for now, let's just stick to the basics. So again, one, fully electric, two, hybrids, and three, fuel cell vehicles. Okay, are you ready to dive on into the first type of EV? Fully electric cars? Let's do it. All right. Okay, so you're probably asking yourself, how does a fully electric car actually work? Well, as opposed to a combustion engine, it uses electricity from a battery to power the engine rather than the combustion of fuel. The capacity of the battery determines the car's range, and range is a fancy way of saying how far it can go on a single charge of the battery. So here's another abbreviation, Sarah. You ready? Okay, I'm listening, I'm listening. Okay, BEV, which stands B -E -V. for... BEV. Yeah, BEV, or like BEV, BEV stands for Battery Electric Vehicle. So a BEV runs strictly on electricity. It doesn't have a combustion engine at all. That's why it doesn't produce emissions locally. All right, Jonathan, but... What about range or how far it can go in a single battery charge? Instead of running out of fuel, is it that now the car can run out of battery? Now, this is a common issue, so let's debunk this myth, right? So today, most BEVs have a range of over 185 miles or 300 kilometers. And most drivers in the USA, they drive less than 60 miles or 100 kilometers a day. Plus, by using a range extender, drivers can worry less. A range extender is a petrol-powered generator that feeds electricity exclusively to the battery when its charge is nearly drained. So in a BEV, this generator does not directly power the car, because if it did, that would be a hybrid. Okay, and hybrids are what we're talking about next. Mm -hmm. um, but before we do... Another advantage of BEVs, or these battery electric vehicles, 
is that they have the most country-specific incentives and tax credits. Wow. Fully electric vehicles are ideal for people who can charge their battery at home or at work. Nowadays, public charging stations are popping up everywhere, especially in metro areas and along motorways. And this means that in the future, it'll be a lot easier to make long-distance trips with a BEV. So, we give the fully electric cars... Or BEVs, battery electric vehicles. Three stars for range. Three stars for infrastructure, which basically means the availability of opportunities to charge your car. And five stars for sustainability. The BEV is a very environmentally friendly vehicle. Okay, moving on to the second type of EV, which are hybrid cars. You may be asking yourself, what exactly is a hybrid car? Well... In contrast to a fully electric vehicle, a hybrid electric vehicle, or HEV, has both a combustion and an electric engine. Now, depending on the car, both motors can either be independent of one another or they can work in tandem. Now, the degree to which hybrids function as an electric vehicle depends on their electric performance, their electric range, and the range of their recharging system. Remember, when I said before, there are some subcategories in HEVs. Well, here we go. So there are two types of HEVs, mild hybrids and what's called plug-in hybrids. Ah, okay. So let's start with the first one. What does a mild hybrid do? Like, how does it work? Well, the electric motor of a mild hybrid assists the combustion engine. It kicks in when a great deal of fuel is being consumed, particularly during startup. So this enables mild hybrids to reduce their fuel consumption and emissions. And another cool thing is that the batteries are automatically recharged with regenerative braking. Oh, cool. Okay, so what is regenerative braking then? Okay, so regenerative braking is when the friction of braking is captured as energy. And that energy is then converted into electricity and stored in the battery. This is one reason why mild hybrids don't need to use charging stations. Ah, okay. So mild hybrids, which are also known as a 48-volt hybrid or MHEVs, mild... Oh, gosh, another (laughs) another abbreviation. I know, right? Mild hybrid electric vehicles, MHEVs. Mild hybrid electric vehicles. That's a mouthful. Oh, yeah, that's a mouthful. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, the main totally. advantage of MHEVs is its fuel consumption. So it's 0.1 gallons per 62 miles, lower than that of a petrol car. Or if you measure it in liters, that's 0.3 liters per 100 kilometers less. Now, since less fuel is consumed, the vehicle can go farther on a full tank of petrol or diesel. Because the main propulsion system is powered by a combustion engine, mild hybrids, or MHEVs, yes, are ideal for drivers who are looking for maximum range combined with low fuel consumption and who don't want to worry about charging the battery. Yeah, MHEVs have lower fuel consumption, but the electric motor is not capable of powering the car on its own. So this is why mild hybrids get none of the incentives that are offered for BEVs. And that is why they only get two stars for sustainability. Yes. That said, they do get five stars for range and five stars for infrastructure, which is about the charging stations or the fuel stations and the opportunities to get that fuel or electricity in them. So you say tomato, I say tomato. What you really mean is you say BEV and I say MHEV. Exactly. We are (laughs) totally geeking out right now. Oh my gosh, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And to take this to an even geekier level, oh no, there's another subcategory of hybrid vehicles, and that is the plug-in hybrid. So Sarah, there's got to be a cool abbreviation for this one, right? Uh, You guessed it. Plug-in hybrid is PHEV, which stands for Plug-in Hybrid Electric Vehicles. All right, PHEV. Got it. Yes. A PHEV, or plug-in hybrid, is the best of both worlds. It has both a combustion engine and an electric motor, and each one is capable of powering the vehicle on its own. 
Plug-in hybrids use regenerative braking as their energy source, but they can also be plugged in to recharge the battery. Awesome. So the difference between a plug-in hybrid and a mild hybrid is this. While a mild hybrid car captures electric energy solely while it's being driven, and thus can only supply a limited amount of power, a plug-in hybrid, or PHEV, plug-in hybrid electric vehicle, a PHEV is also capable of recharging its battery when it's parked at a charging station. This significantly expands the electric range of the plug-in hybrid, like the 2018 BMW 530e iPerformance, which can drive 28 miles, or 46 kilometers, only on electricity with a fully charged battery. You know, Jonathan, many PHEV owners can already manage most of their trips on electricity alone because daily commutes are generally less than 30 miles or 50 kilometers. Of course, it does depend on how much you pay for electricity, but you'll likely be saving a great deal. If the electric charge is depleted, then the combustion engine takes over, so you don't have to worry about finding a charging station. Cool. All right, so PHEVs are ideal for drivers who want to use their cars in a variety of ways, from daily commutes using electricity to longer trips using petrol. In addition, PHEV drivers benefit financially in certain countries directly from financial incentives and indirectly from lower taxes from reduced CO2 emissions. So, in total, we give the PHEV, or the plug-in hybrid electric vehicle, Five stars for range. Five stars for infrastructure. And four stars for sustainability. Woohoo, not bad. Woohoo, not bad. <laughs> that said, they get five stars for range and five stars for infrastructure. So in this case, that means filling up the gas tank and finding those fueling options all over. So you say tomato, I say tomato. You say BEV and I say MHEV. <laughs> We're totally geeking out right now. <laughs> oh, totally. <laughs> yeah. Now, moving on to our third and final type of EV. Or electric vehicle. We've got the fuel cell electric vehicle. All right, Jonathan, what's the abbreviation of this one? <laughs> okay, so the abbreviation for the fuel cell electric vehicle is FCEV. Kind of obvious, right? Well, maybe, but maybe it doesn't exactly roll off the tongue, but still informative for sure. True, true. So for those of you wondering how a fuel cell electric vehicle works, listen up. FCEVs create their own electricity on board. So hydrogen in the fuel cell reacts with oxygen in the air, thereby generating electricity. That electricity is used to power the electric motor, similar to a BEV, a battery electric vehicle. And as a result, the fuel cell electric vehicle only emits water vapor and warm air. Wow, that sounds really environmentally friendly. I know it does, right? But it is and it isn't. So the ecological disadvantage is the production of hydrogen in the fuel cell. That hydrogen requires a large amount of electricity. And on top of this, the hydrogen must be transported from the production facility to petrol stations. Yes, you can fuel up quickly, but the fuel cell filling stations are few and far between. Also, it's still very expensive to manufacture fuel cell systems. And one of the main reasons for this is that platinum is needed for the catalytic converter. Ah, okay, got it. So, all in all, we give the FCEV, or fuel cell electric vehicles, three stars for range, one star for infrastructure, and two stars for sustainability. You know, at the end of the day, every driver is different, and every driver has their own personal needs. Luckily, there are lots of different types of engines out there to serve these specific needs. Exactly. And each kind of vehicle offers drivers certain advantages. Even conventional petrol or diesel cars have their place in the mobility mixture of the future, like for specific user groups and for special areas of application. Exactly. So in the future, we'll probably see a combination of several technologies. 
BMW has prepared for this with its innovation vehicle platform, which can accommodate these three types of propulsion systems. One, the combustion engine, two, the plug-in hybrid, and three, the fully electric vehicle. So everyone, we hope that you now have a better understanding of the three different types of electric cars out there. And you can impress your friends with the cool abbreviations we've taught you as well. <laughs> Here's a recap. Okay, ready? EV stands for electric vehicle, which includes all variants that feature an electric motor. Exactly. BEV stands for battery electric vehicle. HEV stands for hybrid electric vehicle. Now we're going to go into the subcategories of HEVs. So the abbreviation MHEV stands for mild hybrid electric vehicle. And PHEV stands for plug-in hybrid electric vehicle. And we finish with FCEV, which stands for fuel cell electric vehicle. All right. Now you are well informed and ready to tackle any conversation about EVs. I mean, after all, YOLO. Uh, huh? That is so old, Jonathan. No one says YOLO anymore. Uh, okay, for the listeners at home, that stands for You Only Live Once. <sighs> oh my gosh. Well, SMH. Uh oh. Uh, what does that mean? Shaking my head. <laughs> Ouch. Ooh, okay. Well then, NVM. Uh, what's that again? Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. <laughs> Thanks, everyone, for listening to this week's episode of Changing Lanes. And if you enjoyed this episode with us, make sure you subscribe to our podcast for future episodes. Plus, to dive deeper into all things BMW, head on over to BMW.com to learn more. I'm Sarah. And I'm Jonathan. And this has been Changing Lanes. See you next time. TTYL. Oh, I know that one. Talk to you later, right? Yep. Awesome. Talk to you later, everyone. Bye. Bye.